What's going on, party people? It's your boy BQ here with the King of the Mountain Radio YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. This is a new segment that I've been wanting to try for quite some time now. And when I hit the 500 subscriber mark, I decided that I was going to do it. So what it is is a podcast spotlight. I'll be uploading a podcast from a, a colleague of mine, a friend, a podcast that I think you guys will enjoy. And it'll I'll upload it here on the channel, maybe weekly, every other week. I'm not quite sure yet. And most of the time is going to be Global Force wrestling related stuff, but not necessarily. You know, it could be other topics, but it's going to be stuff that I think my audience would like. So the first podcast that I really wanted to upload was the Heelcast. Now, may, maybe many of you who listen to me are already familiar with them. They've been covering, you know, TNA a lot longer than I ever was. And they have a really great show. And what's really great about these guys is that when I kind of came on the scene in the podcasting world covering the company, they never saw me as competition. Um, I'm sure, I mean, we all see each other as friendly competition, but it was in, um, they were, they didn't see me as a threat of trying to step into their lane. They immediately took me on as a colleague, as a, uh, you know, a partner in this, like we're all on the same team fighting a good fight. So this is really good group of guys. I've grown, I've grown to, you know, become friends with GFW dude and Raven effect, you know, through social media. And so I'm going to be uploading the heel cast. Now this is the past episode that they, um, that they were covering where the main event was LAX against Alberto El Patron. So even if you guys don't listen to the entire thing, maybe you listen to one, two, five minutes, ten minutes, however long you listen to, I'm going to put their information in the description below so you can subscribe to their channel. And also they have the Impact Asylum website. So that's where you can go if you enjoy forums, things of that nature, talking with other fans. I know TNA Mecca is no longer down. I mean, no longer up. But if you were someone who enjoyed posting online and talking with other people, I'm going to put that website on there for you as well. So even though this podcast was associated with Mecca for a while and they were doing their own thing with Impact Asylum, like I said, never never viewed me as some kind of threat or enemy. So I hope you guys enjoy this. This is the HeelCast. And again, in the description below is the links. Subscribe to their channel and hit up impactasylum.net. Hey yo, it's me, it's me, it's the R-A-V, coming back for another edition episode of the HeelCast this week. Uh, join with me uh, on this special edition, and I say special edition because uh, you're about to find out in a minute, but first, the one, the only, the uh, underscore himself no more, the GFW dude, what's up man? Hey, what's up brother? And yes, this is a very special episode, and I am like totally stoked to be part of it tonight, buddy. So my man, uh, yeah, I haven't been this stoked since we had the return of Greg's, but dude, uh, throwback heel cast, uh, first time in forever. We have three of the original four with us returning himself is wait, no, not wait, old school heel, OSH, my man, what's up? What's up, heel casters? How's it going, guys? Hey, how you been, OSH? I'm doing good. Just living. <laughs> <laughs> One day at a I'm time, not, one day at a time. I'm not really good at banter. <laughs> you know, Space Cadet Old School Hill, he's returning. And, you know, kind of fitting a few weeks back, you know, to, to make things better for Chef's perspective. We told everyone on the air, the Hillcast, everyone that's been on there, we're still cool. And I said, I love Old School Hill. We still talk all the time. 
So anyone that thought the heel cast was not together, we were for life. It's so awesome to have old school heel back, man. It's it's just awesome to have him on for tonight. Thank you wait, very much. What you all don't realize is that we've actually got him tied up, and he's he's in a barn somewhere, right? Sort of the K style. So he didn't really want to come back, but we made him come back because that's how we roll. We're heels, right? Yeah, you guys made the barn really comfortable. I appreciate <laughs> that. Absolutely, and you know, like. We did all that. We tied up old school heel, and like we were actually able to have him talk. Um, we're not going to say we have no weight chambers because uh, we really don't want to. Uh, we don't need an investigation ongoing. You know what I mean? But uh, he's sodomized. Or, or, or just put it out there. He got <laughs> sodomized. Well, it's the heel. Like everyone who comes on and do the show gets sodomized. It's kind of like we said. We said hurls to look for him, and he got sodomized. <laughs> That's all fappy hurls. But uh, I you did know, not know stuff. we were open about this, guys. <laughs> things yeah, things didn't change, you? man. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, we had the, reuni- the reunited, man. Like, all of us, the old school Dirty Hills, we were back together on uh, Impact Asylum the other week. It was crazy. We were all there. Uh, Count was back with us. You know, Wake Chambers, old school heel, GFW dude, myself, Griggs. Uh, you know, the only thing we're really missing was uh, that scandalous son of a bitch, Eco, bro. But, uh, oh, you know, man. we're all got to get him. We're all back, man. So it's just it's it's good to be around Impact Asylum, and if you're not at Impact Asylum right now, you need to get over there because look, uh, kind of said last week with a little bit of hits, but look, uh, ImpactAsylum.net is now not only the undisputed, it is like the only one uh, true Impact Wrestling fan site out there, the safe haven. Like it is fucking popping now, man. Like everyone is on ImpactAsylum.net. If you're a Impact fan, so if you're not there, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you got to hit up ImpactAsylum.net. Also, you know, always at ImpactAsylum.net, you can check out Straight Shooting with HeelCast, him, Heelcast member himself, FK9, the self-made man. Uh, also, uh, you know, speaking of uh, other HeelCasters, check out our boy Robert Does Wrestling. And, of course, uh, Impact Heads with Chef and Kyle. Uh, they're doing their thing. You know, Chef has his big announcement come out, too. Uh, I know what it is. I don't know if uh, he's announced it yet, to be honest, because I haven't been able to check out Twitter or Heads. I've had a crazy busy week. But uh, check that out. Um, look, also, man, I tell you guys about my man, Big Ray Show. I uh, I don't have all the information that I normally have, but look, it's at Big Ray Show. It's a hashtag Impact Attack. Just go to his Twitter page, follow him there, uh, you know, or just go to YouTube uh, every Saturday morning. I think it's Hacker Hammond. I mean, just just Google that or search that, and you will find the Impact uh, Impact Attack Big Ray Show. Love it. Uh, also, man, you know, we're not the only Impact Wrestling sites in town, and neither that. I mean, check out, of course, our boy BQ at King of the Mountain. I mean, BQ's really taking off and doing some big things, and proud of BQ. Of course, there's Andre Corbeil. You know, everyone knows Andre. Uh, and, of course, uh, you know, our our listener, uh, LB One of a Kind, check him out at the uh, One of a Kind Society, One of a Kind Elite Society podcast. I butcher that every week now. Sorry, buddy. But, you know, there's the plugs, guys, and, uh, you know, we'll hop into the news. Uh, very sad, sad time for me. I uh, kind of expected it. I'll be honest, so Hurls, of course, because Hurls likes to get our hopes up. A couple weeks back on the show, Hurls said he heard an interview with Davey Richards where Davey actually said that he was uh, actually considering wrestling uh, next year and not retiring at the end of this year, but uh, a little premature and unexpected. Um, because Davey Richards, uh, he left GFW Wrestling. He said he was going to retire at the end of the year. Uh, he left it in july i mean technically the last time he wrestled i believe was june for the company uh he didn't technically retire uh he just said he can't do the full-time schedule anymore but he has left impact to pursue his dream of becoming a doctor um and i I guess i'll throw this out there if you guys want to touch on it you can but uh you know apparently on his twitter bio it's been changed to single father is that one of the descriptions for him um and you know obviously he's been married to angelina love uh, in real life not just on tv uh, so I don't know if uh, the, it could be the end of that marriage or a divorce, uh, which is sad. There is a child involved. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and we'll let uh, the GFW do your thoughts on Davey or this thing or anything you want to say, my friend. So, yeah, a couple of things. Um, Davey Richards did not retire. He was asked for and was granted GSW release. He's still taking uh, limited bookings. He just really wants to focus on med school and is uh, no longer able to wrestle full time, and that's why he left GFW. So my guess, Raven, in fact, is that Davy Richards will continue to wrestle through the end of this year, right? But just with independent bookings. Uh, as far as you know, what may or may not be going on with him and Angelina Love, and you know, let's just hope for the best. You know, I've heard 
uh, you know, rumblings in the past that they're uh, very passionate lovers. You know, they're very passionate, and then they argue incredibly hard. And uh, you know that, that takes its toll, you know, over time. If you if you just kind of look at their on screen personalities, you know, they're 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 fairly intense people. So obviously, for the sake of the child, you know, and 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 Dave and Angeline as well, you know, we wish them nothing but the best. But this is one of those cases where you know we're losing uh, a wrestler who is arguably and and maybe not even arguably, maybe just flat out, you know, the best technical wrestler in the world. For my money, he is anyway. Uh, at the same point in time, when you stop to consider that he's going to be helping a lot of people go into medical school, he's always been an EMT. This is a guy that's always had a life away from wrestling, and I think that this was to be to be expected. Uh, but it's a good thing for Davey, because Davey's going to go on to do some great things. So I think that we should just applaud him and be happy for him. If there's a positive in this, I think it's that GFW may be looking to be much busier as a company, to the point where... Davey can't participate. I don't know what that'll entail. Maybe more road shows. Maybe I wouldn't say more recordings because he can, or tapings because he would be able to make those, but possibly a lot more touring. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that was something I kind of thought of too. I actually left a comment, you know, that was like, can we actually really consider GFW full time? But, um, you know, it's, it's clearly, I think you with them going on the road a lot more, uh, that that may be a, a reason why. Um, and maybe that's good things for GFW. Like uh, the, the heel of school of old just said there. So, I mean, that, that's a thought of mine. Um, as far as the Angelina thing, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's look, man, no one falls in love, uh, gets married, uh, you know, expecting it to end. You know, you want everything to end. And, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. Uh, you know, I've been through a divorce myself. It's not fun. Um, you know, with them, they have a child involved and, you know, you got to hope for the best for the child. Um, hopefully, you know, like both of them can get along well, uh, you know, do what's best for the kid. And, you know, man, I mean, they're together for a reason. And, you know, hopefully uh, they can work things out and work out their issues. I mean, you know, like I know she used to date Crimson back in the days. I, I mean, I'm sure it might be a little bit awkward for Davey to be in that locker room with her ex-boyfriend or whatnot. You know, some people may feel that way, especially if it's the passionate thing that you were said. Uh, you know, maybe that uh, would probably drive him a little bit crazy too, going through the divorce. But uh, you know, it's only speculation, and I don't want anyone to like actually take my word for that. But uh, you know, the other thing I want to say, um, if you've kind of listened to me on, on uh, like TNA Asylum over the years before we started doing this show, man, there were, there's literally been two people that I've just been banging the hat, banging the drum for, um, were the two people that I had to see in TNA that I thought could change it, and that was to bring back the Pope um, and like give him the push that he was in 2010. Like we got that, but uh, the Pope is a commentator, not what I was looking for. The other thing, the other guy was Davy Richards. And look, I watched one match of Davy Richards in ROH, and I was sold. I literally was like, TNA absolutely has to get this guy. This guy is the game changer. Uh, just the way the ROH booked it, man, it was kind of like how Paul Heyman would do stuff. Uh, and I'll give ROH all the credit in the world on that. Paul Heyman could take guys and just make them seem so much better than they were in WWE, like with Bam Bam, Big Little Raven, etc., and uh, yeah, I just felt like if TNA could get this guy, man, he's such a good, talented wrestler. Just the way they portrayed him is just as badass. It was like, this guy is amazing. He's a game changer. He's a champ. Um, and uh, it just didn't work out that way. Uh, and here's what I want to ask you guys is, uh, you know, I feel that uh, they really wasted Davey Richards' potential. I feel like they wasted him throughout the years. Uh, you know, the Wolves, the Wolves were a great tag team. They could be one of the best ever, but look, they most of the time had no competition at all for the Wolves to wrestle. Uh, they really neglected and skimped on the tag team wrestling. And there wasn't much for them to do. And then, you know, you have Davey get injured. Uh, you know, they miss uh, matches with Kurt Angle and, uh, you know, Galloway, stuff that could just been classics. Uh, I feel like Davey and Eddie was the rivalry of the year so far, and it was really good stuff. But just a big waste of potential, in my opinion. Um, old school heel, do you feel, uh, you know, throughout the years, Davey Richards was wasted in TNA? I do. I do. I, I don't have a whole lot to say, but uh, I think uh, I think you know TNA Impact, whatever you want to call it, in the, at the time they put him in, they booked him well, but they never gave him good opponents. the The tag team scene was just lacking, so I just thought it was poor most of their time there. They just didn't get they didn't get put in matches that I really wanted to see. Pretty much what you just said. There's just uh, they just weren't put in in the spotlight like they needed to be. Yeah, they they were with the booking. They were with with uh, you know they were put in the prime spots for the show, but their opponents just weren't up to snuff. And I think you're kind of seeing that now, just where with Davey on, on his own, 
in some of these matches with the guys they've been bringing in. He's he's done terrific in the ring lately, and we we really didn't see a lot of that for, in the last few years. You know, Davey was a was a world champion in Ring of Honor, right? And yeah. uh, and and he was he was kind of kind of wasted there as well. I mean, they they never really gave him a whole lot. As far as in TNA, whether he was wasted, uh, you know. I, I think maybe I'm going to interpret the question a little differently than you guys. I don't think he was wasted at all. I think that he was brought in uh, as a uh, as a top top end tag team, and I think that they did top end tag team work. I think that they their work when they were with uh, Team 3D and with the Hardys was off the charts. I think that their work with you know everybody that they worked with was fantastic. I do think that the tag team division suffered at times, you know, while they were there, and in fact, it kind of suffers right now. I mean, we got we got a lot of low end tag teams nobody really knows anything about, right? At the same point in time, the reason I'm going to say no, it wasn't, was because he was always booked well, and you know, they there was really no reason to pull that tag team apart considering how over that they were. So I I don't know that there was a need to take him and separate him from Eddie. He did have an injury. He missed a year, right? The only time where you could say that, you know, maybe they could have done more with him as a singles run is when Eddie was injured and Davey was there by himself. Obviously Eddie capitalized when his singles run a lot better than, than Davey did. And that's, that's booking again. Right. But I do think that Davey is one of, if not the, greatest technical wrestlers in the world today uh for sure at the same point you know a lot of it's just timing and opportunity and it it wasn't there and let's face it is davy richards a guy that you're going to invest a lot in considering the fact that you know he has outside interests the same outside interests that i lauded him for a couple minutes ago they come back to haunt him here Because that's not a guy you're going to get behind. You're going to get behind a John Cena who's going to be there every single day doing everything that you ask. Not a guy like Davey Richards who might decide, eh, I want to go to med school. So I think that that, as much as anything, you know, probably kept him from maybe going a little bit further. But I just think that, honestly, I just wish they'd have kept the Wolves together, to be honest. You know, um, one question that I have, you know, is did GFW know? You know, they, did they expect Davey to leave this soon, or you know, was it kind of unexpected that he left so early? Um, you know, I think I feel like the way that maybe he was booked after that, anything. I mean, like he just he just got beat in the Super X Cup. Uh, you know, I feel like maybe he should have been Trevor leasing. I don't feel like Davey should have lost to anyone in that in that tournament. To be honest, I feel like he was by far the guy that should have gotten that push to win it and should have been pushed harder. Uh, you know, like I, I feel like they should have gave him like a blowout match. To be honest, it's it's kind of like man, did we just see the last of Davey? Um, you know, and just, I mean, real fast, look, and I might go quick and just move on, but I mean, yeah, the Wolves spent most of their time wrestling the Bromans. I mean, like, the, the, they could have put him against Magnus and Bram. I mean, even Tyrus and, Tyrus and Eli, I think, at one point, or maybe that was too soon, but like, there was a, uh, the menagerie, like, crazy Steven Knox. Like, they, they, they had no opponents, you know what I mean? Like, they didn't use that. They didn't use Manic and Sonata, like, the beat down plan. They could use MVP and Kenny King. Uh, you know, they did have matches with the Hardys, Team 3D, the Wolves, or whatever. Or not the Wolves, but the old school heel old school or oh my gosh the dirty heels good god i'm uh, thinking of us but you know like they had the bad influence thing on their plate and they literally never did that they never did bad influence against the wolves they did it one one night only show only that was it um you know we got the one match with dk which was fantastic we got the one match with the wolves where david got hurt or not the wolves my god beer money you know where david got hurt and uh, you know david was all upset and clearly we got no more of that for a reason but you know it was still a great match in my opinion davy had nothing to hang his head on but uh, you know that was that was pretty much it. I just I feel like there was too much waste opportunities when they had the big feuds. They were good, but I just feel Davy should have got a bigger push. And while they had nothing going on in tag team, they should have utilized both of those guys more. Um, you know, all I'm gonna say is anyone's gonna make a joke like LOL GFW doesn't pay him enough doesn't doesn't pay him enough money. He had to go be a doctor. Look, unless you're in the WWE, um, doctors probably make way more than pro wrestlers. So any troll making that joke, and I'm sure doctors make a lot more than most guys in the WWE too. But look, moving on. Uh, also, so August 17th, I think uh, all of us knew that because we read the spoilers, but August 17th has been revealed as a live show and it will be Destination X is back, baby. And we'll see the finals of the Super X Cup, that show. Uh, I don't know anyone that's more about uh, the X Division and reviving it than, uh, you know, that guy who kind of was a mastermind behind that, whole, behind that whole hashtag revive the X Division thing we tried last year. Uh, old school, hear your thoughts on Destination X, Super Cup. 
for Super X Cup. I'm I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I uh, right now I'm having trouble remembering who is involved in the Super X Cup. That has nothing to do with this. It's just I'm I'm struggling to remember some things every now and then. Um, I'm just really looking forward to it. I love what TNA or GFW has done with the X Division recently. It, it's so exciting to tune in every week and to have a, a live show, especially geared towards the X Division, is going to be fantastic. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this too, guys. Um, you know, uh, the neat thing about this is that, you know, they have guys that they're bringing in from, you know, effectively around the world. And that's pretty cool because it gives us new matchups that we're not going to get to see every day. It gives us something to tune in to look forward to see different because these guys, they might not be back. So we'll get to see what they can do and we'll get to see some great matches. And I like to see them do more of this. I've said this a million times on this show. What we really need is to have GFW bring in supplemental talent, comes for a set of tapings, maybe comes back in a few months for a set of tapings and just, you know, supplements the talent so that we can see some new and interesting matchups. When you look at something like the Super X Cup tournament, that's what it's all about. And let me tell you something, the guys they've got in this thing, I mean, Desmond Xavier, ACH, these guys are just, these guys are just super, super high flyers. I will, I would give just about anything to get those two guys in the ring. If you can put them in the ring with somebody that's like, you know, Davey Richards as well, right? I mean, holy moly. Just 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 think about how awesome this is. I can't wait to see those guys pair with Matt Seidel for that uh, for that fact. So very, very cool stuff going on here. And uh, I think that all the fans should be excited for it because you're not going to get this anywhere else. You know, the, um, you know, the one thing that I want to say is that I think is going to happen out of this uh, is it for the first time in a long time when uh, this company now does their their free pay per view TV shows? We're actually going to get a free pay per view TV show done the way that it should be. Um, you know, not a bunch of promos. Uh, it doesn't feel like just a normal show. You know, like backstage segments and stuff. It's going to be like an actual like good wrestling show with X Division featured. Um, you know, and I think it's going to be more like Clash of the Champions, like we've been asking for, and that, that's what I'm excited to see, and that's what I do have faith in this company for, and I have a lot of faith in this company. Um, and, you know, moving on, so having faith that, you know, uh, we mentioned uh, OI4K last week is coming into Impact Wrestling. Uh, there has been, it was actually on the show, but they also, prior to that, released a, a teaser for them. Uh, it's a pretty cool uh, trailer or video or whatever you want to call it. Uh, give props to Kevin Sullivan, not the Taskmaster, of course. But, uh, man, they, these, this uh, this video, I'm going to say, man, it really gave me chills. I'm excited to see these guys. It was, I think it was really well done. Uh, they're going to be called OVE now. Uh, we found out that it was Ohio is for Killers, which is a, a Hawthorne Heights play, which I think is just ridiculous. But I believe people are speculating it's Ohio versus everyone. Uh, GFW, dude, thoughts on this one? Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what they are. I don't know anything about these guys, right? Um, uh, this OI for Ohio is for killers. Uh, it's kind of odd that they would tag them as being from a region. You know what I'm saying? Uh, at the same point, I'm hearing a lot of good things about them, but I've never heard of them before. So we'll see what it is. Is this going to be them taking the, uh, the broken brain stuff and changing that around because it's definitely a little bit weird. Is this their new version of the decay? Uh, what is this? Um, don't know. Don't know. I guess we're all going to find out. And well, what the hell is with all the acronyms in GFW? OVE, you got VOW. Um, there's other ones. LAX. I swear that they're trying to create a secret code. And we're going to get a couple more teams. And then we'll finally know what this is all about. If she's not released, don't forget the CVE. Christina Von Eri, CVE. That's true. Yeah. I'm going to try to let my autism figure this out. <laughs> you know, and I think when we bring up CVE, I think I just cracked your code, OSH. It's we I have LVN, K, too. LVN, but we're talking CVE, OSH, I'm talking INK, INC. Are, are you saying I'm part of this? I'm thinking you might be. I mean, oh, you know, it's, it's a very healer's thing to do to just kind of give a little, little hint of reveal there about your secret plan to bring back Ink Ink to GFW. <laughs> that's that's uh, my I would, guess. I'd be the, the most evil man in the world if I, if I had intents to do such a thing. You, you probably would be. Probably would be. But, 
Yeah, I, like, I know MSTKI, for, I'll say to get on this show, um, him on Impact Sub, he's been hyping these guys up for got a, a year or more, two years, I don't know, a long time. Um, so I'm excited to see them. Trust that dude's opinion on a lot of things, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, so Dirty Dutch himself, they had a conference call. Look, we all know Rey Mysterio. There was interest in him. Uh, there is a contract offer on the table. We know WWE's going for him. Uh, remember that anniversary prediction show that we had in the RAV? Uh, there's another acronym. Uh, he predicted that uh, at some point, and I said maybe anniversary, but at those tapings, I'm a little late on that, but I kind of predicted we'd see Jack Swagger in. So uh, Dirty Dutch did confirm that GFW is interested in Jack Swagger. Uh Old School Hill, I think, I'm not even sure if uh, the GFW dude is too familiar with Jack Swagger since he hasn't seen WWE in so long, but uh, what, what's your thoughts on the potential of this happening? I mean, the uh, Lisping legend is, he's talented, so that's that's always a positive to bring in more talent. Um, you know, he's, he's not the best on promos, but he's he's got enough charisma to get him through. I think it'd be it'd be kind of fun to see him in, in GFW. I think, you know, with his talent alone in the ring, it's it's not high flying, but it's it's nice technical stuff, and I think we need more of that. Even though I've been pushing for uh, X division, <laughs> I, I think we need a lot of good technical wrestling, and I'd I'd be up for that. I don't know where really, really where he'd fit. Um, I'm afraid they push him right up into the main event scene, which and I'd rather see him more with um, yeah, battling Moose or somewhere around there in the upper mid card. But I'd like I'd I'd like to see him in. So, um, sadly, I'm going to have to admit, I actually watched some WWE this week. Um, a terrible thing happened, and I wound up needing a new DVR player. And I didn't have any content tape, so I flipped it on. And um, every match looked the same. Uh, the wrestlers spent more time talking to each other and holding them in headlocks than they did actually wrestling. Uh, it was it was really bad, actually. I mean, it was terrible. I kept I kept flipping the other things, some old UFC fights. For one, thank God, it's just that I'd seen them. Um, so sadly, Raven Effect, I have watched old WWE. Uh, what I, what I will say is, I know nothing about Jag Swagger. Uh, if he's a good talent and he fits in, I say bring him in. I'm not one of those guys that's going to be oh, don't bring him in because he was in WWE. I'm not going to be one of those guys that's going to be like oh, he's got a name. Um, I don't know who the hell he is. But, uh, hey, if he's going to be good, they want to bring him in, price is right, you know, do it. Yeah, I guess from what I understand, too, like, he actually is somehow the rarest case in the world. He can actually go by the name Jack Swagger outside of the WWE. He can't just go by Jack, apparently. Um, so there, that's a plus, right? Uh, man, Jack Swagger is basically uh, – man, because basically – He's, when I, I watched him since he debuted in uh, what was the WWE ECW back in the days, and I, I just want to bring up if anyone remembers uh, the promo with him and Christian when they had their feud when he, Christian dropped the suffer and suck attached. I don't know, that just cracked me up when he made fun of his lisp that way, and that's always something that stood out to me. Uh, I didn't really like him during the ECW times because I felt like they really were just pushing the guy down my throat, which uh, you know was a complaint of mine about oh, damn near everything in that product um, when I was still watching it towards the end. But, you know, Jack, he... I, I, I've gone back and forth with this guy so much because, like, after a while, I think it was, like, when he actually left ECW and, like, kind of hit the main roster, it was, like, I, I saw a lot in this guy and actually had become a fan of him for a while. Uh, and I, I saw the potential there. I mean, if you take away the list or whatnot, I didn't see him with the with the Dirty Dutch stuff, but I believe he actually became world champ before any of that stuff happened. And I think at the time, like when he was world champ, I actually kind of justified it a little bit. Like I didn't think he was too bad. I thought like he had shown the actual strides to be a champion uh, from what I understand. And I remember like towards the end when I stopped watching it, it was kind of, he had died off again and there wasn't much of swagger. And then I guess, you know, it kind of fluctuated from there. And then I gave him that push at WrestleMania with Alberto. And then he got like the DUI for weed or whatnot. What I hope they don't do, and I said the same thing with Ray Mysterio, I just hope they don't throw him right in there and, and another feud with Alberto. Uh, you know, especially the top of the card. And, you know, it's like they've already done that. I just want them to not rehash the feuds that I saw in WWE that I saw too damn much of. And Alberto versus Mysterio was one of them. Uh, you know, I, I did not see any matches between Swagger and Alberto. It's just still like, don't do it. You're only going to be, it's just going to be sh shooting yourself in a foot. People have seen that already. Um, so if you're bringing Jack, do something else. I think Jack Swagger and Moose would be good. I like Old School Heels' uh, his analysis there. 
Um, so speaking of Moose, my man Moose, dude, I'm so I'm so happy about this because like not only do uh, we keep losing guys like after a year or two years, like we we keep up with these shitty one year contracts, and I've just been dying for someone to get like a, a three, four, five year deal. Moose just ex- he just signed a three year extension with GFW, and dude, I can't even explain how excited I am for this in more reasons than one. Uh, maybe because I was tooting that moose horn the whole time, and so was uh, the GFW dude here. But uh, GFW dude, we, we made a sales pitch to Moose to come to TNA back in the day. So you want to go ahead and gloat on this one a little bit with me? I mean, this is awesome, right? We got, we not just got uh, a guy who is somebody that we like. We got somebody who really is the future of this company, and we got him for three years. And so I'm expecting Moose to get a big push. I think he's always deserved the big push. It's just a matter of bringing him along uh, properly. You know, like they did with EC3. They brought EC3 along and they really built him right. They need to do the same thing with Moose. But now that they've got him for the next three years, I think that we should see him, you know, main eventing here in the next six months or so and then give him a good, you know, you know, year and a half, two year uh, run at the top. And then hopefully he's resigned, you know, before those last six months of his contract. So, yeah, this is definitely a gloating thing. This guy has the entire package. He's. He's over with the crowd. He's got, you know, he's actually not bad on the mic, and he can certainly improve there. But his his wrestling for such a big man is just off the charts. So yeah, this is this is this is fabulous. This is fantastic, and hopefully we're going to see them book him a lot better than they have, you know, in recent months. Oh yeah, I'm I'm stoked to see Baby Beluga for three more years. Uh, T, I was not a fan of his in Ring of Honor. I didn't like the the, the matches and the guys they kept sticking him with. But after after he um, came to GFW, he's really converted me. Um, I just like to see him get the title off of him and move him up into the main event. Maybe give him some some room to breathe more in the matches instead of sticking with that format. And I'd really like to see what he'll do. It, it should be pretty fun moving forward. Yeah, you know, I, I was one of the very rare ones that was actually really sold on Moose during his GFW times, and I actually remember. When this was happening, having actual conversations with Old School Heel about this, uh, you know, texting back and forth. And I know I know that uh, Old School Heel was not a moose guy at that time. I was. Um, you know, I thought for his size, he's a, he's a dude for his size that can do some shit that most people his size can't. I will say this, though. Like, uh, while I was big on him and whatnot, and some people weren't, I'm not gloating for the fact that, you know, this was all me. Like, moose has fucking improved a lot, a lot, a lot in the ring, is it? Is it? As a pro wrestler, like as far as actual in ring product, um, look, he, yeah, he, he can definitely use some work with his promos. That's 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 no big deal, or I mean, that's that's not you know a, a hidden secret or anything. It, it's they're not great, they're not horrible, but there can be improvement. Um, look, the, I think the big thing with this is like this guy was like all but a lock to go to NXT, and it was like a sure fella thing, like WWE wanted him, he was gonna go to NXT. But then some shit went down there, and uh, they, due to uh, uh, accusation, we will say, that happened in Moose's, Moose's past, they passed on him and said, go there, one or two years, we'll bring you in after that. He just signed for three extra years, man. Like, I, what, I honest to God, I thought Moose was going to go to NXT when his contract came up. And I was, at times, I thought, you know, it's going to suck, because next year we'll probably lose Moose, um, and he'll go to NXT and probably tear it up there. But, no, we get three years. Um, you know, I've said Moose is my wrestler of the half year so far for GFW, uh, and, and I stick to that, man, because look, Moose is legitimately putting on great matches. I think he's put on more great matches this year in this company than anyone else has. It's like he's having good matches with literally everyone that he steps in the ring with, and he's, I think he's had more great matches in this company uh, than anyone else has this year. Uh, you know, something I, was, I said Galloway was doing last year. Uh, Moose has kind of stepped up. He really has, and I think, you know, is he the future of this company? He probably is. The dude's very credible. I mean, look at the guy. He's playing the NFL. He's a world-class athlete. He's big. He's bad. He legitimately looks like he would kick your ass. And he would. But, you know, the, just the three-year deal, man, that's what excites me the most because I'm just, I've, this company's been so screwed over by one-year contracts and people leaving in the middle of it. I mean, shit, look at Mike Bennett last year. Uh, the guy goes over on EC3. You know, and the guy that pinned EC3 for the first time, fair and square, pinned his shoulders. He's not even with the company right now. He's saying his wife's last name, and apparently uh, not too successful from what I've heard. But, uh, you know, there it goes. And, you know, speaking of uh, that other company, that uh, the Miracle himself, Mike Kanellis, is not being successful at, 
So there's a there's a guy there that I really don't know. I know the name, but he goes by Braun Strowman. And according to uh, I guess my boy, since we're going throwback heel cast, we can we can bring up Davey Meltzer's name on there for just an inside joke and shits and giggles of how mad I made some people last year. But uh, so Dave Meltzer apparently reported this story that uh, Karen Jarrett went up, and I, I guess I don't like to admit this, but apparently uh, they're her and Kurt Angle's son. Is like a big fan of Braun Strowman, and uh, she tried to get an autograph for him, and he he turned the kid down, if I remember correctly. And then uh, I guess Karen kind of like had a promo berating him about how she was going to tell the kid's father that uh, Braun was a jerk to him and refused to sign the autograph. Well, apparently, he was a, jer- a jerk after that, but I refused to sign the autograph. And then um, she revealed to Braun that the the kid's dad is Kurt Angle. And so, I, and GFW, I'll kind of let you confirm this for me, but if I remember reading this right, did he, like, get down on his hands and knees and, like, beg her not to tell Kurt Angle that he was rude to her son? That, that, that's, that's one story that's floating out there. There's another story that it was just a bunch of drunk people in the bar having an argument, too. Um, but, you know, the latter story could easily be somebody just trying to, you know, defuse the, uh, you know, the bomb. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, there are definitely some conflicting stories here. You, you know, Raymond Effect, there is one thing that struck me as very odd. It was in a detail that I read. Do you know where they this all happened? Was it Orlando or Nashville? It was Nashville. But, but, but it was in a bar, right? Do you know why they were all at that bar? Uh, why were all these people at the bar? I want to know why a five-year-old child was at the bar for one. But I don't think a child. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think he was at the bar. I think she was getting it for him. Uh, I don't actually think he was at the bar. But Uh, why were they all at the bar? Old school here. Do you know this? I don't. I assume it was to get intoxicated. Well, okay, okay, this is true. (laughs) This is true. But 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 see, I drink alone and I drink at home, so I don't need to go (laughs) to the bar for that. (laughs) Well, you know, there is a reason I keep changing my name after all. Um, well, WWE was in town, right? And apparently Jeff Hardy had had a concert and they had all gone to Jeff Hardy's concert after the show. Did anyone else? Now here's, well, but see, here's the thing. If, if this was a Jeff Hardy concert, like I read and Karen Jarrett was there, this all goes to show that, you know, Jeff and Jeff are still buddies. Oh, that's funny. No, right. Was so this, the that, concert this is the part that struck me the most interesting. Sir, was the con the concert at this bar? So that that I don't know. It was just something okay. along the lines of they'd all gone out afterwards. Jeff Hardy had a concert, and it could have easily been at the bar. I mean, let's face it, Jeff Hardy's probably you know not going to be headlining Madison Square Garden anytime soon. Uh, so it could have just been that he got up on stage and you know sang a few songs uh, at this particular bar afterwards. You know, uh, and that's the extent of it. I, I don't want to make it sound like you know he's 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 taking over Dolly Parton or Elvis here, but. Uh, I mean, it struck me as it is. Is it's right down the street, right? Uh, but it struck me as interesting that that was the supposed reason that all this talent was there, and there was GFW talent, and there was WWE talent because there's a lot of GFW talent that's based out of Nashville, obviously, and WWE was in town. But uh, you know, when you start talking about the you know the Hardys versus GFW, and then you hear Jeff say, "Well, I just got off vac- going on vacation with Jeff Hardy." You know, then you turn around, and you see this, and you find out that there's some hardy relations there. Now, I I only read that in one spot, but it was something as I was reading this. It's like, okay, Karen Jarrett's a mom; she's got little kids. What the heck is she doing in 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 a bar? You know what I mean? In in some random bar where WWE folks are, but apparently they were all you know getting together to uh, celebrate Jeff's music. Let me put another slant on this: Was Matt and Rebby there? Yeah, see that I didn't hear. Wouldn't that have been cool? I, I think maybe they got deleted. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to create some fake news. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We, we do that all the time here. Rift. There's some obvious. There's an obvious rift there between Jeff and Matt and Rebby if if they weren't there and uh, the Jarrett's were. Potentially, unless Matt is holding you know Ed accountable or something. I mean, who the heck knows? But I get the they impression were that on a Jeff. Conference call. Yeah, exactly. I get the impression that uh, that Jeff stays out of this stuff. You know, Jer- Jeff uh, Hardy. That is. You know, we haven't heard much from him, but at any rate, that's the supposed reason that they were all there. And uh, I was trying to figure it out. And when I read that, I was like, uh, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it could 
totally do that. I mean, maybe they're getting intoxicated and running a uh, Karen Jarrett gangbang, or maybe, maybe, just maybe. So, I mean, we're going to see where if history's going to repeat itself. Maybe Karen got tired of uh, good old Double J and was like, you know what, I'm going to go gold dig some more. Maybe she was there trying to get with Shane McMahon. So, so you all noticed that we did not plug the Hire the Heel cast uh, this week, right? <laughs> As oh, yeah, we now the, talk about Karen Jarrett uh, uh, gangbangs and screwing Shane McMahon, who, you know, that, that dude, like, just fell out of a helicopter. So we had to give him that poor guy a break, man. He's had it pretty rough. Hashtag fire the law, hire the heel cast. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> plug that for a reason. Very true. Um, we're too busy plugging Karen Jarrett, apparently. This is what I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Karen Jarrett. Everyone wants to hate on her, and I get it. But like everyone out there that's uh, talks, and maybe not old school Hill because he's got some high standards and whatnot. Married man, but look, everyone that talks about how much they hate Karen Jarrett, and whatnot, they would stick Karen Jarrett in a heart. Like she's not an ugly woman. She, I, she's good looking. Um, one thing I will say, I don't hate her. Know, actually, I'm one of those few people that just doesn't have a problem with her. I actually don't either. I mean, maybe. Uh, okay. She's been a lot better since she's come on. She's not nearly as obnoxious. But who is who's that socialite who has so much plastic surgery that she now looks like a cat? You guys know uh, who I'm talking about? I don't Lindsay know her name. It's, pardon? Lindsay Lohan? No, no, no. It's body with the last name of Kardashian. It's, it's this old lady. She's had so much uh, plastic surgery that she looks like a cat. And I don't remember her name. It's, it's, it's out there. But I feel like Karen's starting to look like that. No, I'll uh, grant you that. I will grant you that. She definitely looks like she's, you know, been under the uh, under the needle a little too much, you know, Botox and and a few other things that are a little more obvious. And, and I'm more of a dog person, so I, I am too. But I don't know. I would uh, I would definitely go doggy style with her. Um, man, I need to just I need to be classier. Uh, good gosh! <laughs> uh, <laughs> now he figures it out. Of old school. Now he figures it out. <laughs> You know, just just bring back the original members to you just bring you know remind me of these things about uh, how I need to tone myself down for being classier sometimes. Like uh, one thing I did want to say, man, like uh, you know, pro wrestlers and stuff, you know, like they um they 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 look badass. They're built, uh, you know, they're they're in good shape. Uh, they look scary, like they could kick your ass. But look, man, um, this this real fighting and stuff, this UFC, which I, I have a real soft subject right now. We bring up UFC because my heart was legitimately broken last night. But um, that's a, that's a whole different type of tough and badass. And look, man, um, wrestling, uh, you know, real wrestling, and, and mixed martial arts is kind of one of the like. Uh, it, it's it's really in a lot of ways people say that's the most important thing to have. And so Kurt Angle being like the uh, like he would have been if he would have done MMA, which it, it almost happened, and it probably would have had the sport been bigger. Um, Kurt Angle probably would have done MMA. And you think about Kurt Angle, how good he actually could have been. Uh, I mean, he's got the training and whatnot. I mean, Kurt legitimately probably could have been, you know, Daniel Cormier, probably the best wrestler to actually be in mixed martial arts. I mean, Kurt would have been a better wrestler. Uh, dude, maybe, bro, like, if Kurt Angle's going to fuck me up, dude, I would be scared to death, man. And apparently this Braun Strowman guy is pretty fucking big and whatnot. But uh, I would be uh, pretty damn scared if Kurt Angle wanted to whip my ass. Like, dude, Kurt Angle... I don't bring it up because I think he's a shitty fighter and he sucks. He's the most overrated fighter ever. And John Jones is gonna like literally embarrass him. But Brock Lesnar's big ass. Apparently, Kurt Angle just threw Brock around the around the, the locker room one time. There's a story that Kurt just embarrassed Brock, which I'm not too surprised. But I mean, dude, Kurt's a lot smaller. Kurt be fighting like middleweight, light heavyweight. You know, Brock clear heavyweight. I mean, I'd be scared to death. I'm, I'm not too surprised that Braun Strowman was like, I don't want to catch this ass whooping in the locker room in front of everyone I know. I will beg. And take that embarrassment and just get fucked up by Kurt Angle. That would be my guess. So if there's any truth to it, I just wanted to say that. Why well, we kind of stall right now. But I uh, want to uh, thank uh, Old School Hill here for uh, bringing in some information for me because I was struggling with Raven kind of screwed up. But we bring up the Hardys and uh, this search session has expired. Um, so maybe I'll wing it if someone can bring it up. Um, look. GFW, we talked to Hardys, all this. So GFW uh, suffered a big L. So they tried to uh, trademark some of these names with the Hardys. And off the top of my head, you know, I'm trying to find the site. And the link I just got didn't come through. But uh, they lost. They, I know that Brother Nero was one thing they tried to trademark. I think what was Broken Universe, another thing that they tried to trademark. 
um, and it was rejected. And I'm trying to find the reasons as to why they said it. Uh, if either of you kind of have that information right now, uh, please speak up and don't forever hold your peace. But anyone, uh, either of you know more about this than me right now as we speak? Uh, you know, I, I think what's going on now is that they're, and this is not uncommon for there to be issues with trademarks at all, but what you're seeing is, is that they're trying to say, is this for a person, an actual human being? And if so, you need their, their consent. So what, yeah, what GFW needs to do is explain that broken Matt Hardy was a character and not an extension of the person, Matt Hardy, who's an actual individual, because if he is that person, then they would need his consent to, uh, to, to register it. And obviously Matt's not going to allow that. So it, it's, it's, it's highly, you know, at the end of the day, it's highly unlikely that anybody's getting a trademark out of this is my guess. But, but GFW would come back and say is that, look, broken Matt Hardy was a character. There's no way this is an actual human being. Nobody's this strange and we want the rights to the character. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not a patent attorney by any stretch of the imagination. I don't do trademarks or any of this stuff, but it would seem to me like that, that, that might be reasonable because they're calling it broken Matt Hardy as opposed to a broken gimmick or broken Matt. They might have a better shot at broken Matt than broken Matt Hardy, but obviously they're going after the whole thing. And that makes sense. Yeah. And even with that, it's already been established as use with GFW. So it'd be really difficult for WWE to do such a thing. Yeah, I mean, really. Yeah. Quite, um, yeah, I was gonna say, and, and I think that I think that old school home makes a great point. They don't they don't have to trademark it for it to be unusable by WWE. Okay, so the trademark is just a part of the ongoing suit, and you know all of the legal ramifications. But they can say that we own the rights to this without having it trademarked. Exactly. I just signed a contract with the company, and we. We do a lot of different things, and we design things. And if I design anything under that company, it, it's immediately property of the company. I mean, this is incredibly standard. Um, but what we're just seeing is two people with Matt and Rebby who are just trying to get a lot of attention over and over again, trying to stay relevant with this information. They, they know that the trademark stuff's bogus. They know they're not going to get a trademark, none of this. They're, they're just staying relevant. You know, old school, you you bring up a good point. Actually, what you sign, in my experience, is actually, believe it or not, not that common. Usually, the company wants anything you do, whether you do it for them or not, you know, as long as you're employed by them. And as an independent contractor myself, I had to, on several occasions, multiple times, uh, change that to when I'm working for you because, you know, I do have outside ventures and I want to make sure that I own rights to things that I do for that. So if that's how yours yours was written up, you're actually very fortunate that they only did it while you were working for them. You can go home and do something that they don't own. Yeah, you're right. And my boss is great. So, <laughs> so yeah, you're correct. That's a that that's a good thing, by the way. That your that your boss is great, and a bad thing that I'm correct, because in reality it makes no sense to to do it any way different than what your boss did. So tell your boss that he's got the GFW dude stamp of approval. Yeah, I'm sure I'll, I'm I'll sure that know. means a lot to him. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm finishing business school. Um, business school is basically, um, I, I would equate it to learning the rules from the devil of how he wants you to live. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's see how how much we can circumvent morality to get the most for your company. That's that's basically what they've taught me. So I can see how they would try to screw the workers over as much as possible. Kind of off topic from wrestling, but still. Hey, you know WWE is a part of wrestling, so you know, must screw the workers as much as they can. I mean that that's that's a thing. Hey, I'm, sh- I'm sorry, I'm shocked I haven't done a case study on Vince McMahon yet. They will after he dies. I, I honestly, I think that they're gonna, I think that they're gonna tear his brain apart and figure out what's in him, kind of like what they're gonna do to some of the football players. Um, I, I think it's odd here that uh, WWE is actually trying to, uh, to, to, to get Matt Hardy's name itself. I suppose Matt signed off on it, but why Matt would sign off on his name as a trademark at WWE? But he wants broken Matt from GFW. That's true. And That's as soon as they cut, <laughs> as soon as they cut open uh, Vince McMahon's head, 
to get his brain. You're going to see a spirit leave, and it's going to cackle all the way out. <laughs> if they legitimately, if they legitimately let, or if he allows WWE to trademark Matt Hardy, his real fucking name, um, literally everyone that's mad and like boycotting GFW Impact, you know what the fuck it's called. Because of the Hardys can shut the fuck up and kiss my ass. Uh, Matt Hardy should shut the fuck up if he's actually going to do that. Um, like, I, I, and I might David, be wrong. It looks like Matt Hardy's going along with it. So, uh, I mean, you can just go ahead and say it. It looks like he's going along with it. I mean, the old school hero, I, I think you have access to the same information that I have here. Uh, yeah. the, the GFW one, it says that they're, they're claiming that they need uh, Matt's permission. The WWE one is not. Yeah. It's Does there June 19th. That, yeah. Did anyone else see the massive hypocrisy in this? Like, my God, I, I like, I wish you wouldn't have yeah. said this, and I didn't know this because, like, I'm about to blow a gasket, and I'm, I'm, I'm refraining. Dude, I think that's why we're talking about it, actually, because it is, it is, it is like literally ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> my God, man! Like, and we thought Cody like not being able to have his dad's last name, you know, like his dad's fake last name. Like, I think he can maybe still have Runnels. I don't know. Maybe not. They probably took Runnels too. Um, but he just needs to change his works. name. Like what Warrior did. But even then, he made it Warrior, not Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, I, I, I got to say that, like, the least tough I can kick your ass thing in the world is a wrestler just named Cody. Um, but <laughs> I, I guess a wrestler just named Matt. I mean, I don't know. Everyone I know the name Matt is a big pussy. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Piece of shit ever. Um, like, I, I know Vanguard 1 was one thing that they tried to trademark as well. And I, I guess. Um, I'll have you guys, uh, if, if I'm wrong on this, you guys feel different, just go ahead and step in. But from when I remember originally reading, I just kind of sounded like while they lost, it was kind of like come back with more specific detail and information, and then we'll listen to the trademark thing. I mean, it doesn't sound like they have no chance. It just seemed like they needed more like definition as to what they're exactly trademarking. Uh, is, is that, you guys agree with that or? No, huh? Yeah, sorry, I was I was looking something up here with the trademarks. Yeah, I don't actually I don't actually see anything uh, on here that's ringing the bell about Vanguard One. I think yeah. that I read uh, somewhere that it might it, it might have a um, uh, there might be a conflict with somebody else on Vanguard One. But no, that is that is right. That is right. I remember. That's what I thing. heard. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it in the works here. Uh, OSH, are you seeing anything there? But that's really kind of what I read. Yeah, that's what I read though. Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel personally like reading this, and you know, I'm I'm obviously on GFW side, like so, like by far in this thing. But I kind of felt like you're really gonna try and trademark Brother Nero, like that's just middle. That kind of fucked up in a way, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm on their side. The only thing like I really have left to say, and and now that you guys brought up about Matt Hardy trademarking his name, like it just blows my mind that much more. But what I was gonna say, man, is like without. Uh, the broken Matt without the broken gimmick. I mean, dude, Matt Hardy's nothing. Like, he's he's super irrelevant. He is uh, mid-card as fuck. Fat Hardy. WWE, like, never going to the top. Jeff will go back to being Jeff and be a main eventer if they want to do that. Because, uh, you know, Jeff is a charismatic one. Jeff is the icon. Jeff is, like, the legitimate, bona fide Hall of Famer, world champion, like, multiple time. Like, at one point when he came over to TNA, was literally the second most popular, biggest name in wrestling, not named John Cena. Um, I mean, like, Matt is nothing. I mean, like, I won't say he's literally nothing, but he's, like, mid-carter, never going to do shit. When he's broken, Matt, like, he's huge. He's over. Like, he's a, he's, he's a real big thing. Like, Jeff was actually in Matt's shit. Like, that will never happen again. Um, and, you know, it, he's got to have that, you know, because if not, who is he? I mean, look, John Gaburek would be like, let's put the world title on him twice. But anyone else is going to be like, no, you're, you're Matt Hardy. You're, you're not really anything without that. And that's why he wants that so much, you know. But I mean, due to like literally, if you, are you banking on it that much that you will trademark your actual real name over to the WWE? Like how fucking? I, I'm I'm just disgusted that he, like he has such an issue with GFW having it, and so many people are boycotting and refusing to watch this company because they're trying to trademark something on that was done on their brand. Like meanwhile, he's willingly giving WWE his actual legitimate first name. Like, if he doesn't work for that company or, like, under a Legends deal, like, what, can he not go by his real name that his father gave him? Like, does he have to go by Matt Moore? He went to Oregon State. He plays Dolph quarterback for the Dolphins. He's a backup quarterback. If you go to Oregon State University, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> then again, if you're married to Rebbe, you're a piece of shit as well, too. But, uh, let's, uh, let's move on, guys. 
we went pretty far. I'm just going to say, uh, look, the uh, Connecticut show, the house show for GFW did get canceled. Um, disappointing, you know. Uh, I don't think we need to speculate a whole lot on that one, uh, unless either one of you guys really have something to say. I, I'm never going to go this route, but either of you guys have anything you want to say about the Connecticut thing? I'll just I'll say logistics. Yeah, logistics is nobody buying tickets. Yeah, those logistics. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've been in those logistics too before. We're at, uh, canceled my meet and greet front row tickets for sure here at the uh, University of Oregon. Uh, disappointing for sure, but hey, look, we're still doing it. Baby steps. Um, I will say, uh, GFW, TNA, and Bank fans, like, fuck you for not tuning in this week. Uh, the ratings, I mean, the ratings dropping again, and it's getting ridiculous. Like, it's time that we as fans start tuning in. Uh, everyone keeps talking about they'll get to, to Spike TV. Uh, and everyone keeps saying, it, like, there, there's so much room behind, like, oh, it's going to be fun. We're going to get back on Spike in the U.S. No, we're not when the ratings are like this. The ratings have to consistently climb. And look, we have to do our job, too. It's fans that only get to tune in, but to actually, uh, like, help promote. Because Lord knows that they don't do it. Then we got to do something. Because, like, this, we, they can't lose another network. And the only thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to go into the impact recap, is uh, I've been doing this for a while, like, the photos are out there with them talking to Spike, like U.S. execs and Spike. There's a Bellator stuff. Like the fans, we know that they're trying to get on Spike TV. Um, who's to say if we all know this, how does Pop not know this? And if we're Pop TV, are we kind of like really look what they're doing? It's kind of like catching your, you know, one of your hoes cheating on you if you're a pimp because they have so many other TV shows. But I mean, like it's like, it's like watching, catching your significant other kind of cheating on you. You can't take them away. But uh, you know what? Um, I did finish it, so... Stop with your hate there on the comment board. So, look, let's go into that show that was uh, Impact Wrestling. Finish so, what? Uh, Impact. I was like... Yeah. Well, of course, Impact. you watch you watch, you watch, watch Impact when it comes out, right? That way you can get part of the rating. You're not one of those guys that DVRs it and watches it a week later and makes the true. plus seven, right? That is Please true. tell me that's not you. You're, 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 you're online true. live, right? I am. Um, yeah, Commercials at all. No, I fast forward. No. Oh. I work until 8, motherfucker. That's when it starts here on the West Coast. It starts at 8 p.m. our time, so like, I get off late. I will I, I will admit, yeah, the past two weeks, uh, I have had like the craziest, busiest weeks of my life. Um, I have had to watch Impact late. I said on the shows we recorded last year, or last week, um, you know, I was, everyone knew. Raven Effect had it finished, uh, and if anyone wants to know, when we started recording this show, uh, it took about an hour and a half to actually start recording, but uh, Raven Effect was starting during the Rosemary Santa match, but Okay, to start, uh, Mr. Brother underscore, since we want to go back to old school shit. We want to rub old, old shit in people's faces, is what I'm going to say. But I uh, appreciate it there. Good bird on me. Um, so we open with uh, EC3, uh, Eli Drake, which would be like the greatest alliance ever. Uh, you start rock stars fighting there, but unfortunately we get uh, Chris Adonis taking on our man Moose, uh, Eddie Edwards, and Mara Fuji. Uh, old school heel, what were your thoughts on this match, my friend? There, I was uh, stuck on mute there for a second. Um, I think you know I'm I'm not a big critic. Um, I, I I just look for fun. If I enjoyed the sh if I enjoyed the match, then great. If if not, then blah. You know I don't I don't really do a lot of booking or think about that kind of stuff. But uh, I, I enjoyed it for the most part. It it made sense. Um, I like I like the guys involved mostly, except for Adonis. Um, he's kind of there. He, he's like. Uh, I almost don't even notice him <laughs> anymore because I've, I've I've just started to tune him out. But I really enjoyed Moose in the match. Um, enjoyed Edwards. I guess ultimately I enjoyed the match, which is the best I can really really say for it. Is I had fun. <laughs> you know what. OSH, I think this is why we get along so well because I'm just looking for fun too. You know, I'm looking for a way to suspend reality for myself for a couple of hours a week, right? And that's a great way to do it just by immersing yourself in the show. I thought it was great to start the show with a high quality six man tag match. You know, you've got, you know, Eddie Edwards, former world champion. You've got EC3, former world champion. You have Moose and Eli Drake, you know, two guys that are up and comers and they're future world champions, right? You're introducing Marafuji. And then, yeah, there's Chris Adonis. So <laughs> I got to tell you, old school heel, I hadn't thought about it that way, but your assessment's spot on. He doesn't seem to bother me as much anymore because I've just got him tuned out. 
you know, so this was a fun match. It was a good match. What I didn't understand, and I put this in my notes, is something on the lines of EC3 wins with a new finisher, but they didn't mention anything about the new finisher. You know, later we found out that they're calling Ethan Carter's driver the ECD, which is just like now we've got one more of those acronyms, OSH, which we might figure out the secret code pretty soon here. But we got EC3 and the ECD. Uh, I just think that the whole purpose behind this is, first of all, he wasn't using the one percenter anyway, but I think maybe he's trying to distance himself from, you know, being a Carter and being the elite and the rich guy because, you know, Dixie's out now and he's trying to make himself, you know, more of a wrestler and stand on his own. So to me, it was a good match and I liked it as a start to show, but that was probably the big takeaway is that, you know, EC3 really trying to distance himself from the Carter brand. I think you have a good point about that uh, one percenter thing. I didn't uh, actually realize that or anything along those lines. Like that's a great point stuff. You get only on the heel cast, which, you know, I'm very proud of this analysis. Sometimes even though we don't take ourselves too serious. So look, I'm going to say, man, EC3 get in the pin. Uh, I know Old School Hill said he'd like to see Moose uh, drop that belt and move up towards the upper main card or whatnot. I agree. I don't think it should go to EC3 because I think EC3 should be the champ of the franchise. Um, I'll have to say two things on here. Um, they call it ECD. I guarantee you, uh, if Ethan Carter isn't calling his penis ECD to get ladies, I don't know what else you can do because that is trademark. Um, and you guys talk about tuning out Chris Adonis. Um, I just want to. This is what I want to point out. Speaking of tuning out. Did you hear Swole Mates got canceled after one fucking show? <laughs> I heard yeah, something I about that. <laughs> so far, that the only it. thing you can find online for them is is related to Impact. That's <laughs> the truth. That's the God's honest truth. Guys, so look, I always set my DVR to tape an extra half an hour, right? That way that if for some reason I miss it and it runs over, I'm good. Swole Mates was the one. I got to tell you, I, I, I tried – watching the first couple minutes of it and it was just like the one guy like hits on a girl and gets taken out of the gym and he's telling the story then the other one comes in and says no that's not the story tells it completely differently and the same girl that got him like kicked out is in like both accounts acting it and it was just like holy shit who thought of this this is this is this is the worst shit i've ever seen in my life i cannot believe that pop tv actually made impact put those guys on the show i i i mean that was just that was hideous oh good god now i would imagine pop or not pop but gfw would have denied would have denied them this if they were able to see the show first <laughs> good point uh, i i mean Jeff Jarrett was kind of running the thing when they had the midget jerking off in the trash can. So, I mean, you know, can't, we can't say it'd be too that in, or, you know, GFW would have pulled the plug on that too much. But, um, you know, like the funniest part about this, like, okay, also real fast, uh, old school heel, and uh, you guys have seen Beetlejuice. I have to assume, do you not think uh, one of those dudes looks like that guy in Beetlejuice with the shrunken head at the doctor's <laughs> office? <laughs> he does. He does. It? And it's funny that you two laugh at that, which means neither of you listened to Hillcast for the past two weeks. That said, uh, I, I didn't. I don't expect you to. Uh, the GFW I, was, I listened to the heel cast. I don't remember anything about um, about Beetlejuice. Yeah, I, I actually literally brought up to twice. half an hour of it last week. Then well, I, I mean, I might, not ha- I might not have it memorized, for God's sakes, but I definitely listened to the show. You don't memorize the show, you son of a bitch. Uh, I know, right? At the point I want to make here, like, they kind of pushed Adonis, and we were kind of getting upset about it, you know? Like, he was getting the pushed over Eli Drake and you know like they they definitely see more in Chris Adonis and like literally anyone else does for some reason you know and it's like as much as they kind of put him over a little bit on TV and like tried to make him something big like this dude they just kind of sacrificed him and made him look like a bitch and a punk to a show that got canceled after one episode yeah it doesn't help it doesn't help when you make a guy look like a bitch and a punk to a bitch and a punk (laughs) exactly and to get back to your Beetlejuice <laughs> comment, anytime I hear the name Beetlejuice, I normally turn it off immediately so it's not said two times in succession or yeah. you know two more times because that's dangerous. You don't want to play yeah. that game. It is. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Are you going to say that? They're, no. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like that? You got to stop that shit from happening. Um, I think if you say Beetlejuice three times in a row, you get struck in the foot by lightning, right? That's very Isn't that what happens? I think that's uh, what happens. You, that's what happens if you feed a mogwai after midnight, dude. You got to all mix up. Straight that's not through what the happens. dining room window and onto your foot. That's what I think happens, folks. 
So don't do that. You can't make this up. You cannot make that shit up. No, you can't. No, not at all. Um, so yeah. Get out there. It's like meathead hitting on a woman. Who'd have thunk? I had a meathead try and kick my ass last night, everyone. It was pretty fun. Um, so, uh, you guys, uh, so this Richard Jess is this fat dude that's always working out in the middle of, a, of like, segments. So he actually spoke to Mackenzie Mitchell uh, during the show. Anyone have any comments you want to throw down on that one? Uh, I, I just want to – go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, um, he, he's the epitome of what we were talking about at the beginning of the show, a barn and sodomy. <laughs> Hashtag fire the law, hire the heel cast. So Raven Effect, I just want to know this uh this meathead that tried to beat you up, but you poke him in the eyes. Did you give him the heel cast eye poke? I'll be honest with you, man. Uh, with with the situation that was going on yesterday and me being sober as fuck and uh, you know, watching Cormier, uh him being like that messed up from a head injury and then uh you know, my my friend legitimately I thought he was dead from uh getting beat up so bad. I'll be honest, uh, the, the thought of fighting this guy back, it would have kicked my ass. I, I, normally, I would take the ass open like a man. I would fight him. Um, I was legitimately backing up and did not want shit going on. Uh, I, I Literally, the guy shoved me. I was already walking backwards. I yelled obscenities at him and told him I wasn't starting shit and to go fuck himself. But uh, I did not need the eye poke at all. I didn't pull a John Bones Jones go for the eye poke. But. Hashtag fire the law, hire the heel cast. I will fight. I, I'll make... Any one of those guys on the law since Fight Night does an MMA thing uh, for fun and shits and giggles, uh, you can have a fight that will be cared about by five people. I'll fight any one of those guys in a cage fight. Just well, add seasoning on there. That, that's how we will do things big. Well, wasn't there that, that uh, what was that that show that uh, the, the the crazy guy uh, had on MTV? They where... had the bully beatdown. Yeah, bully beatdown. You could do bully beatdown with the law. Heel cast versus the law in a tag match. That would be pretty cool. I think, like, if you've you ever seen this thing called Prison Fights, um, they have, like, what a tag match looks like, or, like, a fatal four-way in a real fucking fight, and um, it's, it's, it's about as brutal and violent and scary as you can imagine. Um, and I, 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 it kind of proves how fake wrestling really is when you, when you look at a real tag team match and stuff like that. Well, let me tell you what's not fake. Mackenzie Mitchell. Is it me, or was she just stunning this week? I'm like, God, I, I always thought she was attractive, but this week... It was just like just really hard to take my eyes off of her, um, you know. Her and Ava the story. It's like, gosh, can it bring back the uh, the the knockouts tag titles? Get them in the ring at the same time. Um, Richard Justice says he's a standby wrestler, and this is the stupidest thing that Mitchell's ever heard in her life. Um, yeah, we'll see. I, I I could see Richard Justice tagging with Grado over the next couple of weeks. To be honest with you, maybe maybe Grado will marry him. Who the heck knows? <laughs> Yeah, it looks like Jack Black and uh, Nacho Libre, or whatever that dumb shit. I, I hate Jack Black, so uh, but that's who it reminds me of. Dude, thank you, thank you. Um, you You're know, guys, welcome. I'm gonna say I'm gonna talk about. Hey, wait, wait a minute, fact. Wait a second. Wait a second. You do realize if you say Richard Justice, that's like Stick Justice. I was thinking David Justice the whole time, and I was like. I was like, wasn't Richard Justice like a big uh, baseball player back in the early 90s? I remember it was David Justice, the guy that was married to Halle Berry. But this dude, Richard Justice, like you probably pull Halle Berry too. Yeah, but, but but Dick Justice, that sounds like a dick joke. It does. I mean, this is like, this guy's made for the heel cast. He, he is. And I'll tell you what, like Ray, Raven Effects dude gets no justice because, you know, like, yeah. Wait, wait, we're not a show or definition of. Or anything else either, but that's a different story. I, I think we need to get this guy on. This, this guy just reeks of dick jokes. He does, and uh, I'll be honest. Uh, who better to pull an interview for uh, a guy like this, indie style, than Chef and Kyle? Maybe they can oh, warm over for us. Real, that's real speak too, buddy. That's real speak. Real talk, yo. Oh um, crap! I did. Goodness. I miss I miss Chef and Kyle so much, man. What's up, Chef and Kyle? Chef had a birthday not too long ago. Actually, you know what? Kyle had a birthday just a couple days ago. So happy birthday to Kyle, um, guys. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna say, I, I literally, I, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna. So you guys got nothing more to say. This Matt Seidel uh, promo thing with Lashley, uh, you know, Pritchard coming out with Tyrus. But we saw Lashley kind of charge him, and uh, Seidel kind of did the knee thing like Eddie Edwards did when he beat Lashley for the belt. Um, you know, and then we see Seidel gets up, and he hits that 450 or whatever the fuck he calls it. Uh, all I have to say, man, is it, I was embarrassed uh, for, for not only me as a GFW Impact fan, but for Matt Seidel, for Lashley, to that crowd was um, – that was embarrassing to watch as that crowd. 
Uh, yeah, it was, was so dead, and no one gave a shit. It was, it was fucking embarrassing to watch. That's all I have to really say about this. That was the absolute worst. I'm, I'm tired of tuning in to Impact. You see this 400-pound lady in the front row, and I don't think it's the same one every week. And she's just, <laughs> she's just playing on her phone. And uh, you know, then you got a 300-pound guy. He's up in, in the back. He's playing on his phone. A couple weeks ago, I thought the crowd changed because these, these people left. I don't know how these these just few obese people decide to leave the show, to leave the tapings, and I thought the whole crowd changed, but but too bad it didn't. But anyways, I don't understand why these people are at these shows and they're just basically not looking at what's happening in the ring. They're looking at the ground. They're they're looking around. They're not paying attention at all. I know that the tapings are long, but how can you not get into just even a little bit of what's happening in front of you if you're going to sit there and occupy a seat? Pay attention. Like, be entertained. Allow yourself to be entertained. That's why you're there. I mean, is the floor more entertaining than Lashley and Seidel in the ring? No, it's not. Why don't they like what's happening? Why don't they care? I don't get this. You know, if you go back to the late 90s, uh, WCW, those crowds were electric. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody oh, yeah. paid attention and everybody made noise. And what I found, you know, I told you before that I had actually watched some WWE this past week. Uh, their crowds were silent, too, man. Their crowds weren't saying a darn thing. Now, I- I'll be honest with you. They don't do a very good job at, you know, showing you the people, the individuals in the crowd. So I, I can't say that they were playing on their cell phones. And-, and to me, that's just disrespectful to performers in the ring. I mean, that's just disrespectful. Well, you know, you get live performance going on and you're going to be on your cell phone. Shame on you for being disrespectful. You know, maybe maybe the guy who's over there, you know, tweeting some results, you know, after it or something. But, man, when there's performers in the ring, you know, just for their sake, you know, let's just show some respect. But here's my thing, guys. I, I love Matt Seidel. I've been saying this forever. He's one of the few guys from Ring of Honor I wanted to bring in. My thing, though, is that nobody's been able to touch Lashley except for Eddie Edwards. And now they're just doing the same thing with Matt Seidel that they've already done with Eddie Edwards. I'm not sure how much this is going to help Matt. I'd love to see Matt moved up the card. I think he's a phenomenal talent. But I, I just I just don't see how this helps him. It's already been done. Yeah, I, I Look, man, I, I like Matt Slidell a lot, too. I really do. But, uh, I mean, like, X Division only, man. Like, uh, I mean, maybe like a mid-card. But, I mean, top of the card, uh, main event guy, no. I don't care if he was somewhat big in WWE and they were going to give it. No, uh, he, I just don't see that in him. Uh, you know, I said last week, I think John Morrison, uh, if they ever got him, is uh, much, much more of a, a guy to be towards a top card than Slidell ever could be. Um, you talked about how Eddie was the only guy to touch Lashley. Uh, Alberto did. Just, just a heads up there. Um, and, uh, you know, old school, he'll up the, you know, the, the fat people on the phones in the front row and the four and three and the pounders. I just saying, man, maybe do you ever think maybe they're ordering food? Um, I'm just saying that you can do that shit on an app now. Um, the, the one thing that I did notice in the crowd though, during this happening, I don't know if anyone else would be like, I'm just, I, I it's so embarrassing, dude. And it's so silent. And I'm just, I feel so bad for everyone, but the camera kind of pans out to the side and dude, there's like this, there's one dude that's like going fucking ape shit and like. He's into it. Like, the dude is literally like losing his mind, and it just kind of cracked me up because no one else was. But like, I was just still so down on how like poor the reaction was, and um, you know, like you know, Chef and Heel Team Six. I mean, it, it's no knock on them. We know they do their part. Uh, you know, Ebony. I know her and like the uh, the people that she brings to the shows. I mean, they're into it. She's bringing signs. They're really into the show. But I mean, it, it's really bad to see. And you know, the the thing that always taps my ass is man, like uh, just new viewers and stuff, and people that make fun of it will never really know. But I mean, man. Other than ECW, the uh, 2002 through 2009, there was never a more intense, passionate, crazier, wilder pro wrestling crowd consistently than the TNA crowd was. And uh, that sucks. It sucks. It, man, like, it, it used to be like the staple uh, of TNA, man. Like, it was, it was a six sided ring, the X Division, like, killer wrestling and the killer fucking crowd. And, uh, you know, that, that really sucks. Maybe one I'd like, day. Yeah, I'd like to call out Kyle Barbasol from, from the asylum. Dude, you're there. You're there at most of the tapings. Have fun. Ignore all the other stuff, all the things you think about, all the booking things you think about. Have fun. Get into it. Show that you're a fan. You know, bring us on. Bring us on. It says you're Kyle from Asylum. We know who you are. Go and have fun and bring that back. Just have a good time, man. And I don't want to see the face. Actually, I do want to see the look on the face of the fat people 
when they realized that the uh, Grinder app is not for ordering sandwiches. After <laughs> ordering Raven Effect. <laughs> I'll make fun of myself there. Um, yeah, man, definitely. Kyle, dude, Kyle went from, like, biggest fanboy of Impact to, like, biggest hater, and it's, like, nonstop complaints. And no offense, Kyle, because, like, we had fun with you at Bound for Glory. I, I, I appreciate what you did. Uh, it's just, man, be positive. Go have some fun, dude. Um, so we had the Super X Cup, the uh, last last match in the opening round, and uh, man, bittersweet for me. I do like uh, I can't remember on the taping that there's anything more. I wouldn't assume so because I assume we got some semifinal matches, but uh, this may have been the final GFW TNA Impact match of uh, Davy Richards, and he goes out with a loss um, to uh, it was a Taj, I, fucking Ishimori. I don't know how to say that Ishimori or whatever. Man, um, sucks, sucks bad. Uh, and this is why I kind of want, I hope, like my hope because of the way that they were booking Davey is that they knew that this was coming and he was leaving early. I really hope that was the case because I just, I don't think this guy had any business beating Davey, but, um, we know who's advancing. All I'm going to say, uh, this was an entertaining match. Uh, Davey Richards, thank you. Uh, I think, I think it's an absolute shame that you didn't get more success and impact and they didn't do more with you, but, uh, you're doing a great thing going to be a doctor. How, like, seriously, thank you for the memories with Ring of Honor. With TNA, with GFW, man, I, I I love this guy to death. I support the hell out of him. I think he's like the best technical wrestler ever. Uh, not ever, but today. And it's a shame to see him go. Uh, he's been super cool on Twitter, man. He's been such a nice guy. Go save lives. Go change the world. Uh, and, you know, do your thing. Be a great father. Davey, we're going to miss you. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, old school heel. Yeah. You want me to say something about that? Uh, it doesn't have to be about Davey. I mean, <laughs> just uh, I kicked you guys for like the match itself. Any thoughts you want to say on what happened? Okay, um, it was a good match. I enjoyed it. Uh, Davey, it, it, I think it's kind of funny um, what we were talking about earlier. And, and to me, Davey's had great matches, but he, that spotlight, even though it's on him, he's it's never really made me feel like he was shining like he used to in Ring of Honor. And then recently, I've I've started to get that old feeling back with how much I used to love Davey Richards in this match. I mean, he really carried the match and it was, it was so bittersweet watching it, knowing that, you know, he's not going to be here anymore. He's finally bringing it in the way that I love to watch him and he's not going to be here anymore. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for what he's going to do. It's great that he wants to help people, but you know, the selfish part of me is, is pretty bummed out about it. So I think that they obviously knew. Uh, I think that he was booked this way so that he could be released. And I think the timing of it was around the time of his uh, last match so that people would tune in to be able to see the last Davey Richards at GFW Wrestling, right? So <clears throat> what I'm going to say is, is his promo before the match was hardly that of a heel, right? It was a very face-looking uh, uh, profile, uh, you know, and that uh, this was just a fantastic, fantastic match. I mean, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. These two guys, they put on one heck of a match. It was a show, and I understand that seeing him lose to a guy that's, you know, not really a GFW guy is kind of difficult. At the same point in time, you know, he just put over to Jerry Ishimori, you know, from, from Pro Wrestling Noah. And that's something that's a good thing too. But what we should remember is that this was, I thought this match was just, this match was just off the charts good, guys. I really thought it was fantastic. No, it was a good match. Um, you know, I mean, look, really, before, you know, wrap it up, move on. Look, I, I feel like Davey should have had like a big blow off match. And I always felt, uh, you know, the way that things were going to go if this was his last year, uh, it, a loser leave town. I mean, get that blood view, get, have them take a little break from each other. But I mean, Loser leaves town and Eddie goes over Davey uh, to send him out. I mean, like, really, that fucking final match to remember him by. Um, I mean, this was definitely a good match. You know, the thing, dude, like, I just, I don't know about. And I, truthfully, I don't give a fuck about who Ishimori is. I mean, maybe I will in time. I, I just don't give a fuck about the guy. And that, uh, that kind of sucks because I feel like they raced to Davey's last match. But uh, someone I do give a fuck about would be Rosemary and Sienna both. Uh, last knockout standing. Uh, Sienna going over our girl Rosemary again, man. Um I love both of them. I, you know, obviously I'm team Rosemary over anything. I would like to see my girl be the champ. I want to see her get into Gail and Allie for the, um, you know, feuds over the belt that way. But uh, GFW, dude, thoughts? 
Like, like literally after the uh, Davy Richard Sajira Ishimori match, I was thinking, how do they follow this? And then they bring out Rosemary and Sienna, and that reverse tarantula over the fence in the crowd was just that was just awesome. I mean, guys, how do you not just coordinate my sis as the next bad uh, nay the new Gail Kim? I mean, this girl is the best in the world. It's not close, and I'm not just saying that you know because I'm 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 tainted with her. I'm saying it because just flat out the truth. Uh, I love the way she doesn't back down from KM. And uh, in the end, she loses, but she doesn't look bad in the loss. So, you know, they kind of uh, they kind of protected her. But again, I'd like to see her be going over. Uh, you know, I want to make sure that they have a lot for her. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I feel like KM should be booked better. Uh, that's all I really have to say about that. Um, and the other thing I want to call a ban is uh, I remember someone on Asylum not too long ago, I mean, like, this dude was kind of saying, uh, like, talking shit about Rosemary. Like, Rosemary, uh, like, everyone loves Rosemary, but she hasn't had very many great matches. I just want to say, shut the fuck up. Uh, Rosemary's had plenty. Here's another one uh, where she just tears it up. So, I mean, you can't say enough about Rosemary. And, man, give Sienna her props, too, because, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Sienna guy, and it happened since the start. Uh, so, look, the next thing we had was uh, good. All right, Trevor, Trevor Lee taking on... Octagon Cito, uh, Raven Effects comments on this one are, what the fuck, really? Uh, old School Hill, any thoughts on this one? Anything you got to say? Uh, the match was stupid, but <laughs> um, has Trevor Lee not been a revelation since Shane Helms has left? Oh, for he's, real. Yeah, he, he's so much better. Um, like, he, he, can actually, he can actually talk. You would know it. You would think he would just grunt the whole time. It just shows how much Shane Helms was, was holding this guy back. It, which makes me think, how many other guys was he holding back? I, I don't want to badmouth Shane Holmes, I, and you know, I know he said some things and whatnot. It's just now that he's gone and other people are in charge, it's so much better. In, in, you know, including Trevor Lee, it's I'm really excited, hoping that Trevor Lee sticks with GFW and actually shows what I've seen from him in the past and develops into a, a you know a solid wrestler and you know as a star in GFW. You know, you know, old school heel, if you talk to Chef, he'll tell you that uh, Trevor Lee is funny as shit in real life. And I, I think that it shows. And he never understood why Trevor Lee wasn't able to speak. You know, that both him and Andrew Reverend, those guys are just, you know, total clowns in real life and, uh, and, and cool as shit. And there's no reason why they can't both be great talkers. And, you know, Trevor Lee is proving this in his this non-title run, if you want to call it that. Uh, but the match itself, yeah, it was stupid. It was filler. Um, whatever. Moving on. I, th I think that uh, he actually showed that you could mix in comedy and in solid wrestling. And I think it's a great segue to the next the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> it, it definitely is. Um, you know, I guess, which kind of, you know, I'm not even going to say anything because I really don't want to uh, undercut your your segue to it. So, um, and here's Raven Effect going to be a complete hypocrite on the air, everyone. Um so great up for this too. Yeah, no, for All real. Right. This is a. Uh, it's usually I'm my really, job. I'm actually gonna let you guys just kind of have your way with me on this one, and uh, he'll cast as you can too. So, um, you know, as I said, I started this uh, this show, uh, or I finished when we started this phone call with GFW dude, and old school Hill and myself. Um, I had Rosemary and Sienna on my screen. I was watching it. Um, I, I noticed a great up proposed to uh, Laura Vaness. Uh, you guys want to fill me in on what she actually said and what happened? Because I, um, I had it on mute. I had it on mute, and I was talking old school here on my boss. So, yeah, hypocrite. Tune in to Impact every Thursday, though, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag hire the heel cast, fire the wall. <laughs> and if you if you're not tuning in every Thursday, you're a piece of shit and help, helping this company fail. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag we are the heel cast. Uh, uh, so, so Raven effect, the, the deal is, is Grado comes out and, uh, and uh, Sienna is telling her, don't do it. Don't do it. When Laurel Van Ness comes out and Laurel Van Ness is just so excited and she's just so ready to say yes. And then Congo Kong's music hits and we never get an answer. And, uh, and the announcers, they kind of spoiled it. They're like, oh, I don't think we're getting an answer tonight as soon as Congo Kong's music hit, you know? So that was it. It was, uh, really, uh, you know, uh, anticlimactic. Old school, you got anything to add on that one? Yeah, I, I actually thought Congo Kong came out at first. So Congo's Kongs, 
would distract Grado. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe show him something else that he might be interested in. But it got a little more physical than I expected. Yeah, that dude needs a bra. That's all I got to say. He does. <laughs> I don't mind these guys. Like, yeah, you know, I, I grew up watching 80s, 90s, th- these large men. But there's just something about Congos. <laughs> there's, it, I find it distracting at times. I, th- I think he's taking estrogen shots. I swear to God, I it's do. Possible. He might be, uh, you know, consuming too much soy. I mean, what cup size do you think he is anyway? Oh, uh, C, definitely. Oh, I think yeah, he's there's C. I felt so. I mean, <laughs> that that's a conservative estimate. I was gonna say maybe they were maybe they were D's. So I mean, folks, you... we're not just about dick jokes. We do tit jokes too. True, and they're so perfectly round. It's amazing. Yeah, those, they have those I mean, you normally have to pay for that. I know, right? I have just paid like... for it. I... Wait, what? God damn it! I left <laughs> the mute button off. <laughs> you know, I, I I wonder if you could like bend him over and milk him like a cow or something. You know. Oh, oh, you can bend him over. Do that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No homo. Hashtag no. hire the heel cast, fire the wall. <laughs> I am above the law. Yeah. <laughs> or, or below Congo Kong, whichever is your heart's desire. <laughs> you know what? You know what's weird, guys, and um, and I, I felt like of every analysis that has happened of Congo Kong and of Impact, I was listening to Big Ray's show a few weeks back, and those dudes have seen Congo Kong in person, and like they said, his tits aren't that big in real life. Like they, the the camera makes them look a lot like bigger titties than what they are, and that actually kind of blew my mind. And I feel like any of our listeners, if you haven't listened to Big Ray's, now you know. Wait a minute, Big Ray says that Congo what's Kong big Ray? titties are smaller in real life. So it how does the are... camera add 10 pounds just in those particular areas? I ask every knockout ever. I don't know. Brooke had some big ass today. Uh, dude, uh, he talked the 80s wrestling, man. I just think Congo Kong looks like the... He kind of gives me that Kamala vibe, you know what I mean? And I felt yeah. like if he comes out, like if maybe if Congo Kong comes out and like he marries Grado, you know what I mean? Like maybe he's going to swoop in and sweep Grado off his feet. But then it's like, wait. Even if they did have a gay marriage, like, is he a U.S. citizen? So it's like oh, no. maybe Trump can deport both of them. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that was, you know, I'm, I'm just spreading the uh, spreading the, the politically incorrectness all around, as you know. But uh, thank you. Um, I'm glad I don't have an answer yet to that one. Uh, we had an answer to, uh, look, gauntlet match, Alberto against LAX. Uh, look. My my big question was, am I going to finally see my boy Homicide back in? Um, I hope to God Homicide's hurt, and that's just not how they look at him, because uh, he got pinned faster than about Dewey Barnes did. But um, So Alberto going over all of LAX, uh, I don't know how I really feel about that. Uh, you saw his, was his dad and his brother were both out there, right? We know his brother's going to start wrestling for the company. Um, man, like, dude, I just, I, I like Alberto. I like what he's doing. Um you know, like, obviously there's controversy around. I just, I still feel like, dude, they're putting him over way, way, way too much. And, uh, you know, when it's three or four on one and these guys are your tag team champions, you're going to turn it up and, like, the hottest faction you got. I mean, come on. But uh, Old School Hill, what were your thoughts on it? I Actually, I agree with what you just said. Um, I, like, I liked it. You know, it was fun to watch, but it's just I, – I don't really – the storyline is starting to wane with me. I'm not enjoying it as much week to week as I was. I mean, I know it's pretty new, but I, I didn't like him. Just like you said, I didn't like him going over everybody, even if it was just you know a few guys at first, and then the rest of them jump in. It's just it made LAX look weak. And LAX, when they first came back, I was so excited. And as the time's progressing, it's you know they're they're using the same puns in their speeches. It's just becoming a, a pretty repetitive with me. And I think I think they need to kind of shake things up a little better. Which they may do. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen after this. So, you know, there's there's still a lot of potential with the story. You know, Raven Effect. I, I'm not going to joke with you, man. I blinked. I swear, I blinked. And Homicide and Ortiz had already been pinned, and it was just like it was just Santana in there with uh, with El Patron. I swear, it was like I blinked, and they were both gone. Yeah, I did the same thing. I thought, I thought it was only two men went in by that point. I was like, wait, three guys? It was confusing. It, it was, it was, just heard that. it was so fast. It was pathetic. Um, nah, 
was my thing on this. Uh, I thought it was the worst match tonight. If you take uh, you know Trevor Lee's match out, right? Because that really doesn't count. And let's face, they had to do something between Rosemary and Sienna before they went to the main event, right? Which, by the way, Rosemary and Sienna should have been the main event. Honest to God, if we're gonna if we're gonna call a spade a spade, they should have done El Patron the gauntlet match at the top of the hour and pushed everything else back. But but I digress. These matches were in the wrong order. Um, I typically love uh, melee endings. Uh, maybe you guys call it chaotic or overbooked. I'll call it chaotic, but um, I typically like them. But the problem that I had was the guys that came out. Nobody was over, right? I mean, like they keep they keep sending people out to help El Patron, and you know they're sending out his family. Nobody gives a crap about his family, and they're going to send out the veterans of war. Nobody cares about them either. So if you're going to send people out to have a melee ending for to your show. They need to be over. You need to get some kind of reaction from the crowd. And it didn't get a reaction from the crowd. And I don't think that it did get a reaction from the fans who were watching the show either. And that's the kind of thing that's going to hurt your ratings. If you're going to put VOW in that spot, you've got to get them over. And right now, they're just not over. And they're probably not going to be over either. Just because these guys were you know, in the army does not mean that they're going to get cheered when they come to the ring. It needs to be more than that. Yeah, and you make a good point there. Um, VOW came out, and they looked bad. They Nobody came out of this looking looking stellar, but VOW came out of this looking particularly bad. I, I do not remember which is which yet for some reason. I think it's Wilcox, whoever the smaller guy is. Crimson. No, no, Crimson the smaller guy. Wilcox, right? Oh, okay, yeah, Mayweather. Well, May, yeah, May- Crimson's Mayweather. Okay, That's right. it was Wilcox. Um, Will did Wilcox get hurt right off the bat? Dude, his run right, like he looked fat and slow and out of shape. Did he? Is that what you're getting at? Like when he was yeah, he down he, the ring? he jumped in as soon as he starts to mix it up. It's like he, it's like he got injured, and he just looked awful. It, it kind of just destroys everything they're trying to do with those two. At least to me, I'm gonna have a hard time taking them seriously. It, it, it just kind of made you wonder why didn't they just let El Patron beat them all up? Because that's what happened at the end anyway. El Patron went nuts on everybody. So why not just let him do that to begin with and get it over? You know, I mean, it, it was it was just bad. This was just this was just bad. You know, um, I was and actually, I mean, because I want to bring up the fact that when I saw uh, it's Wilcox, when he was actually even running down to the ring, like Crimson was like a f- full foot behind him and he just looked so fat and sloppy and lazy running down there. And he looked like he was that 300 pound dude from the crowd trying to get to McDonald's before it closes at 2 a.m. to get the, you know, get the final, you know, Rollo McFlurry while it's still in special. Uh, I mean, look, it's the, uh, man, so the VOW, look, um, you say, like, just because they're in the Army, uh, not everyone that's just put in the Army, they're not going to get over. Um, do you not remember Chris Melendez? That dude was fucking gold. Uh, that's a joke. Um, do I actually, so, look, you say nobody cares about Veterans of War, and that's not true. I do, and so does Hurls. Literally, no one else does, but myself and Hurls do. Um, like, I think, dude, I do think VOW could be over had they just not dropped them. And I think the Indian Tour hurt that, uh, not having them at Slammiversary. How bad? Like, I do think, man, I don't, you know, what everyone says, I, I see so much hate for Crimson and for uh, for VOW all around, and, and, and I see it all over Asylum. But I do think, look, these guys pass the look test, they pass the eye test. Um, and, you know, I think. You know, there, there could be some potential there, in my opinion. Uh, that do, Dude, are they Rob the Terry tanking? passed the eye test. He well, still sucks. Shit. Neither one of these guys are Rob Terry bad. I mean, look, D'Angelo Williams surpassed anything Rob Terry did in, in two days of training. But that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't think, I don't think that Rob Terry bad. Um, and, and I have actually heard Wilcox is actually pretty solid. He definitely didn't look like it. But I think they can get over if they get that push, I think um, Reno Scum probably coming back is going to really be a big... I don't think they were getting that over, but I think right now, when they come back, it's going to be big. And I think these uh, the OVE guys are going to be big for the tag team division. I think, basically, that's... Uh, they're probably going to surpass them. There might not be much going on for Veterans of War, but I do think they could be a little more over now. Uh, you said the crowd didn't seem to care. Dude, the crowd didn't seem to care for fucking anything. Um, it, they really didn't. Uh, the only thing, man... Um, you know, you did say no one really cares about Alberto's family. I agree. Uh, one thing I did like about, I do love about this show is having Robert on. As you know, Robert, uh, being in Puerto Rico, has seen a lot of uh, El Hijo de, de Dos Caras or whatever. Uh, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong or butchered it. But, you know, he, he says he is good. 
Uh, he's kind of more of a natural heel. I think the Alberto heel ch- or heel turn will happen at some point. But um, you know, all you gotta say, man, is it, it did make LAX look weak. I'm a big homicide fan, and uh, it, uh, it kind of I just hope the guy is hurt, and that's not how they're booking him. But man, they made homicide look so weak. Uh, and I want to see that dude come back and actually be a legit competitor, like in the X division or something. But um, oh yes, man, LAX, like this is a hot act. They really are. They are seeing some repetitive shit, but they are a hot act, man. Uh, they are doing wonders for this tag team division. I think they are over despite not much competition. Like LAX is fucking over. Uh, and these dudes are tearing it up. And it really sucks to make them look weak. Diamante is awesome. I think she, if she finally ever gets a chance, that chick is going to be fire. But it definitely did LAX no favors, which was not fair to them, and they deserve a lot better than that. And uh, that's kind of kind of all I have to say on the topic. Um, old school healer GFW dude. Before we wrap it up and uh, send the folks home, anything you guys want to add on that before we uh, kick the show off? I'm going to take that as a no. All right. That is Everyone a solid no. That is a solid no with a hard O. Um, look, guys, I want to thank everyone for tuning in this week. As always, uh, man, throwback heel cast. It was so awesome to have old school heel back. Uh, I'm yeah, thanks so for happy. joining us, buddy. Yeah, uh, absolutely, I'm man. Really glad to be on here. Props to old school heel, man. Uh, really, the, the there would be no heel cast if it wasn't for old school heel. That's real talk. Uh, there wouldn't be no old school dirty heels if it wasn't for him either. But uh, look, man, thank thank you for coming back. Thanks for tuning but in. Raven effect. You would have yes, a sir. lot more posts left on Asylum. <laughs> I know, dude. That for real. is truth. I did find this out today. Sometimes I'll be honest on Asylum. I will. I will say some shit on there just to make old school heel laugh, and I know it's gonna get get deleted. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of found out some stuff the other day. I was kind of like, damn, how much time do I waste on there? Posts and shit that will not come on. But uh, you so, know. so I was looking at. I was looking it over, man. And and for all the time that we've been on Asylum, right? I have been flagged a grand total of like seven times. Probably somebody hitting the wrong button. Dude, you have been flagged like 900 and some times or something. It's like unbelievable <laughs> the number of times that yeah, you have been true. flagged with posts there. I mean, like, I, poor old school heel, he's like getting all these flags from you. You know, it's like. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate seen it. You should I appreciate seen it you having before my back. they change the way the moderation panel works. Um, now it identifies who flags a comment before it didn't. And every time I'd come in there, you'd have like nine flags just for math. <laughs> For the man's comments. <laughs> from the from the who's comments? The man. You're the man, Raven. Sorry. Am I? Sorry. Yeah, now I, I gotta say know that out flags loud. And um uh, GFW dude, I do gotta tell you this. Uh the seven times you've been flagged or whatnot and it was someone accident, it was actually me on purpose. <laughs> Sorry, six of the times was you. You're right. <laughs> yeah, six of the times it was me. One time it was one mic trying to give you a like like he does everyone and he just totally fucked up and hit the wrong button. Uh, <laughs> he hit the wrong button. <laughs> yeah. Could have been troll too. I don't know. It was one mic or troll. It was one of the two, but you know, it was an accident. Hey, don't mess with troll, dude. Really, there would be no, there would literally be no old school dirty heels. The name ever invented if it weren't for troll. We wouldn't be taking exactly. champions that beat that ass of yours in the counter, wake in the counter. You and Eco, bro. I can't remember because we just ran through all that competition because that's what me and the old school heel do, motherfucker. You know, you know, guys, we, have some, we that, that, have some strange new characters now, right? We have an Attitude Era junkie who says, hey, yo, all the time, right? If that I've isn't WCW, before. I don't know what is. We've got a guy who calls himself Chicken, and we've got a naked cowboy. Now, I'm just going to throw this out Russian there, guys. And a Russian bear, that's right. If I am the chicken, I'm scared to death of the Russian bear, right? I'm mm-hmm. scared to death of the uh, the, the junkie. And I'm sure as hell I'm not getting anywhere near the naked cowboy. Who, by the way, I don't even want to know whether you're naked or not, buddy. But it makes me laugh every time I see your name. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I am totally not afraid of the junkie. I'm probably hanging out with the junkie. And to hang out with the junkie, uh, I'm probably sucking off the naked cowboy. I think I was I think you probably are the naked cowboy. Or maybe it's Hurls. It could be Hurls is the naked cowboy. Because that kind of goes along with his thing. There's one thing about Raven Effect that you might not know. And as comment proves it. I fucking hate cowboys. Hate rednecks and cowboys. Sorry that to the naked one, but you know, you, I guess maybe you're cool. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I do want to say this. Uh, I'm thinking back to the old WCW days with the when you kept hearing the name Icon. We 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 know Sting is the Icon now, but you had Roddy Piper wore the Icon shirt uh, to GF to TNA Asylum, which is now Impact Asylum. The TNA troll is the icon. No doubt. No doubt. If you were going somewhere else, I was going to correct you. No doubt. 
Yeah, dude, for sure. Like, no one's fucking with Troll. I miss when Troll would talk to us. And when Tro- Troll would talk to me about Dewey Cox and stuff, like, Troll used to talk. Now he does the songs and gives us likes, which I appreciate, and I love the man. I do miss having these conversations with Troll, man. It's, it's been a long time. It, it kind of makes me sad. Like, it's been fucking years. Been years. Five, since six years. It's been a very yeah. long time. It has. It's, 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 definitely, it's definitely been been wrong. It's been wrong. We, we need our Troll back. But uh, yeah. but yeah, we got we got we got a lot of we got a new a lot of new folks out there. Everybody's having fun. Everybody's getting along real well. So that's what's important. But uh, man, some of the names are just like they just make me laugh. <laughs> they do. Uh, I've actually missed some. I didn't know about. I didn't. I didn't know there was a chicken there. Um, a chicken. Oh yeah, I, I gave him a thumbs up just just because I like this name, and I told him that too. I like put a comment underneath. I'm thumbing you up just because I like your name. He's like, thanks, man. And I do. I like his name. I like. I'm not lying about. it. I actually do like his name. But it's like, oh my word, state. I like the instant classic. I like the instant classic guy. That was actually my first. I was actually back in the days. I was instant classic twenty four seven before Raven Effect was a thing. Um, so it's cool to see another instant classic. As a effect is a thing, <laughs> dude. Right now, and I got this from Pro Wrestling Tees, and I'm wearing this, and everyone sees. But I have a shirt; it's got the Breaking Bad logo, but it says Raven Effect instead. I'm gonna wear that every time I podcast. Now, I also GFW, dude. I got that shirt, uh, the Friendship shirt with uh, EC3 and Rockstar Spot. I did get that one as well. Awesome, so, uh, awesome. I did, but I'm proud of this Raven Effect shirt, man. I had to do it. Had to do it. Did you, and, uh, did you post a picture of it on Facebook so we can see it, man. I, I want to see this. I, po- I sent you a fucking text message in Messenger with that shirt today. You did. If you scroll up. Jeez, man. You Old just school you I got the All yellow the- Eli Drake dummy yeah shirt, too. I got three of them. But, uh, you know, the other thing, that, so just speaking of shirts, literally the last thing I had to say is we were talking about the Icon shirt. For God, you sent me a lot of stuff today. Dude, I don't have anything from you in Messenger, man. <laughs> Dude, then who the no, hell did I send that to? That's going to be embarrassing. Like, people are going to find out who Raven Effect is. Probably, probably your to girlfriend. This. Oh, wait, no, man, it's a girl. Be... I wonder if my girlfriend will know. Wait, wait, you, 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 you said it to be sideways. Uh, that's how I took the picture on accident sideways. The old school Hill got it sideways, too. But let, <laughs> me finish this, let me finish this train of thought, please. I was able to adjust the perspective in my head. Old yeah. school heel. The caption says, "What I'm wearing now," and of course, I tuned it out. <laughs> Wait, uh, you wrote yeah, that? Dude? He did. He wrote didn't what do I'm that. Now. And she said that and to I, me because, like, you know, I knew it, it was true, but I kind of felt like it's going to sound like I'm hitting on him. Like, what I'm wearing now, baby. Thank and God he's not the kid cowboy. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I'm like Jake from State the Farm, but uh, look, okay. So we talked about those icon shirts. You know, the icon shirt Roddy Piper would wear and all that. I reminded me of the Ico Pro shirts from WWF back in the 90s. I don't know if anyone remembers that, but that failure was pretty awesome. I remember um, that. Since we're speaking about WCW, look, uh, let's, let's just go ahead and drop the bombshell. At some point in time, because uh, one of our listeners suggested this, but uh, there may be a, a, a memory show, like a nostalgia show, or a memory of a, a WCW heel cast, ACW hook cast, and uh, maybe one other that uh, is going to happen first that we're not going to talk about yet. But just throwing that out there. Stay tuned. 2019, that's coming, baby. And by the way, the shirt does look kick-ass, by the way, buddy. I mean, you know, give me grief about it, but it is it is a pretty kick-ass shirt, I gotta say. I know, it is I nice. Just... I need to get an old-school heel shirt, but there's no wrestlers named old-school heel. Uh, there should be. But... There should be. Have you seen Maybe this it's... gimmick? This guy what? on the indie gimmick is called the Progressive Liberal, <laughs> and he is, like, fucking, like, the ha- most hated heel in the world in the, in the South. He does, like, independent shows, and he's, like, this fucking... Fl- uh, almost said something we get total trouble for on there, uh, but he's like a, a extreme like liberal, and he uh, goes with liberal thoughts and stuff like that. And I guess like the southern heel redneck dumb shit wrestling fans, that, you know, can't tell the difference or just fucking like this guy is just heel heat like nobody's business. They gotta get him in GFW. That just came to my mind. Uh, old school heel, the progressive liberal, uh, told two total different opposites. But you know, I'm just saying. I've been wanting to say in the air we got to get this guy in GFW for a while because this dude, uh, he, he knows what he's doing. It's pretty funny. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, I'm going to check it out, too. It does, sound, it does sound funny. It's a great way to get over. Just be sounds something like, everybody hates. Sounds like something Chuck Taylor would do. Doesn't it, though? It does. Yeah, that made those shoes. Um, yep. I don't know, man. I, I guess... Oh, uh, man. The banter on this is fucking fantastic. This is what happens when you have three legit friends. You know, that we started this all together. Uh, you know, we kind of get reunited. The shit can happen. Shit can happen. The three of us, I talk to both these guys all the time, but, uh, you know, you guys are talking about checking stuff out and whatnot. Uh, we wanted to have a, a quick show and whatnot. It's 1 a.m. your guys' time. I know both of you got to get up early. It's only 10 my time, but 
Hey, should, we, should we say goodbye now to the Heelcast Nation? You got some normal banter, which I hope you all enjoy, but is it time to say goodbye, gentlemen? I think they probably already said goodbye to us. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they did it before Raven Effect said some really uh, politically incorrect things. Hopefully the show doesn't get flagged down again on YouTube. I'm just but. saying, if y'all would just be GFW dude, there are lots of GFW t-shirts out there. All you gotta do is a little bit of masking tape. Dude, you're done. It's good. Do the NWS spray paint and just dude on it, right over it. Boom. You could. You could, but see I can I can I can resell it to goodwill if I take the tape off. And if you do discount <laughs> cheaper that way. If you do original GFW shoots shirts like the, the discount ones, I mean you can get that shit for probably like a dollar from Christina Von Neri on eBay. Oh, for real. For real. I mean I'm 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 right there with Meltzer with the way I shop for clothes. So yeah, absolutely. What, you suck him off New Japan Wrestling's back? <laughs> yeah, I don't melt. I, I don't mention Meltzer for an entire year. Let me get an original bag and I take the cheap shot. My bad. I mean, he's the one that uh, was buying his clothes at uh, Goodwill, right? Meltzer? What at Meltzer? I don't know, dude. He's probably taking them from New Japan where, like, size extra small. It was one of those. Uh, it, it, it was one of those guys. It, it wasn't Mike Johnson because I typically like Mike. But I think it was Meltzer. Somebody was saying buys his clothes at Goodwill or something. So whatever, whatever. It's all good. The I shirt up, fits. Man. I wear it. <laughs> no disrespect to Mike Johnson because I think he's like one of the only legitimate ones out there. But um, I probably even sh- shouldn't say it on there. But like so, uh, through a mutual friend that I know that was in the business back in the days, uh, I somehow became friends on Facebook with Mike Johnson for. I think we are still friends or whatnot. Um, that dude like housed me and housed me now, and I feel bad because I wasn't a buy at the time. But I hit a real hard like money crisis at the time. But that dude was housing me so hard to buy this uh, autographed Raven and Sandman like photos from him that it was kind of like this is it like hitting up my messenger and stuff. And it was like, dude, I just got to get the money. I got to get paid. And it's like I'm paying my bills. It's like, dude, I really don't have this extra money just to buy these things. But it, it was it was pretty persistent. He's a he's a, he's a tough sell there, that Mike Johnson. Wow, what, you're friends with Mike Johnson on Facebook. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't even know if we are now anymore or whatnot. Is there anybody you're not friends with on Facebook? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I get blocked by a lot of girls, so you know. That. <laughs> exactly. Well, and non dudes, you know, chicks. Uh, dudes, dudes never block me. They just they kind of flock to me. So. Just mute. We mute you. <laughs> oh man, uh, heel cast nation. Tune into Impact Wrestling this Thursday. Because if you don't, you're a piece of shit and you're helping us. <laughs> <laughs> He'll cast out Mike Drop.